Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. It is? Shabbat We are excited to be here with you today, and we're going to get right into the message. Amen. Today, we want to talk about struggle. The topic of this today is the struggle is over or old. So why are we struggling? Do you often hear people say life is a constant struggle? Well, why is life such a struggle? Especially for the body of Christ. We call ourselves believers. Self-proclaimed maybe Christians. The children of Israel, Hebrews, Hebrew Israelites, or Jews. But you know what? Let's just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Let's call us religious folks. <laughs> Why, if we say we have the truth, the Torah, I want to say that like my brother, the Torah, I love that what he said. Why is it when we say we have the Torah or the Bible, should it not be manifested in our walk with Yah? Why are we struggling? Spike Lee said it, I love it. He said, why can't we just do the right thing? For a believer to struggle is contradictory to the word of Yah. And before any of you all faint, let me explain. Does not the scripture say in John chapter 10, verse 10, Yahshua said, or Yahushua said, I came, or I came, or I come to give you life. And not only did I come, but I came to give it more abundantly. Jeremiah 29 and 10, one of my favorite scriptures says, I know the thoughts I have toward or of you. Thoughts of peace and not harm to give you an expected end. Proverbs 13 and 15 says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. So now before you inbox me and say we all struggle, that's just life, you can't judge, let me clarify what struggles I am not referring to. Yes, there are random life events that can take us to task emotionally, mentally, physically, and occasionally spiritually, to the point of collapse. Like the sudden death of a spouse, the sudden death of a parent, a loved one, a child. You may experience being laid off from your job, a family tragedy. How about natural disaster? Look at Dorian. Now these events are out of our control and cause tremendous struggle and heartache for a period of time. We all have experienced these random events at one time or another in our lives, but these struggles are not of our own making. Now, we're also not referring to the temptations of life. Temptation by its very nature should feel wrong. When Yah's moral law of the Torah is written in our heart or our mind and a sinful temptation is introduced, our consciences should immediately sense stranger danger. Immediately when we are introduced with an idea of temptation, the believer, the Hebrew, the Hebrew Israelite, the Jew, the Christian should immediately say there is something wrong that is challenging the precepts, the concepts, and the knowledge of Torah. Yes. Huh. However, Temptation itself is not sin. Jesus, Yahshua, Yahushua was tempted. Read Mark 1 and 13, Luke 4, 1 through 13. But he never sinned, Hebrews 4 and 15. So these are not the struggles that I am referring to. Now sin and the struggle with sin occurs when we mishandle temptation. What do you mean, preacher? Let me further clarify struggles when they occur is when we yield to temptation. So I want to reiterate, <laughs> being tempted in and of itself is not a sin. Amen. So when does the struggle occur with temptation? It occurs when we yield to temptation, justify temptation, Whoa. and after it's all over, we say, I'll repent later. Yahushua or Jesus understand yes. I'm only human and he knows my heart. So clearly here to understand this perplexing question, if the struggle is over, why are we struggling? <laughs> the Hebrew word for struggle 
is Shadar. The primitive word is Aramaic, but here is what it means. It means to fight, conflict, contest, combat, tussle, battle, war, warfare, strife, wrestle, campaign, and exert oneself. <laughs> but it is also a verb that I love. It's called hippa, which again means to struggle or strive. But the definition goes more in depth. So when you talk about struggle, we're not talking about if you lose a loved one or any of these things are being tempted. There's a word that comes in this Hebrew definition and it's called recalcitrant. And recalcitrant means having an abstainly uncooperative attitude toward authority or discipline. Obstinately means to be stubbornly to refuse to change one's opinion or choose a course of action despite Yah or the person's attempt to persuade you to do otherwise. Spirit said to me, we have a boys to men mentality. When it comes to letting go our own nature, sin, our own lifestyle, our life choices, our opinions, our attitudes, our habits, and our deals. You name it, we do it. Thank you, Sherry Caesar. <laughs> We serenade our own nature. We belong together. This is what we say. And you know that I'm right. This is what we do. We serenade this thing. But the most concerning thing is the hook from the song. It said, although we come to the end of the road. Y'all know the rest. I just can't let go. Here's what we say to our sin. You belong to me. I belong to you. And so when we identify this, we struggle because now we have become combative toward the Torah and the law of God because we want to hold on to our own natures. So there's a struggle. The Bible calls our old sin the flesh and warns that those who are in the flesh cannot please God. We struggle because people of the most high, we are at war. But this is not war, any old war like we think. This is not going against Iran and Iraq. This has nothing to do with Russia and China. This war causes us to be recalcitrant or uncooperative toward the authority and the discipline of Yah. It causes us to resist him and we refuse to change our course of action. Struggles over. Why are we struggling? Romans chapter seven, verse 23 to 25 says, Here's why, because I see another law in my members, not my neighbor's members, but in my members, warring against the law of Torah in my mind. And when that war is happening, it brings me into captivity to the law of sin. Watch this, which is in my members. And Paul says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? Who shall deliver me from this body of this death? In 25, he gives us an answer to the struggle. He says, I thank God, or I thank Yah, through Yahushua, Jesus Christ our Lord, so that when I mind myself, serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. My Woo! My, my, my. The struggle is over, but why are we struggling? Mm. We struggle, notice I said we, not y'all, we struggle, because we refuse to let go and let ya. Yes. The flesh does not want to die. For those who are struggling with complete submission to ya, it is because there is a deep, deep, way down deep desire to please ourselves and compromise with the world. We cling to our rights. We cling to our opinions. We cling to our agendas. And we remain lords or rulers and want to continue to have dominion over our own lives. And so because we want dominion over our own lives, our walk becomes a struggle. But I submit to you the struggle is over, so why are we struggling? In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote in, writes in Romans chapter 8, verses 7 through 9, he said, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, or Yah, for it is not subject. In other words, it will not be ruled. It will not be governed to the law of God, to the Torah. And then he says, neither indeed can it be. 
Verse 8, he says, and so they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Carnal means that we, we, have, we, we love or we enjoy to minister to our wants and our desires, our animalistic man natures, our mere human natures, the lower side, not the higher side, the lower side as apart from our divine influence of Yah. Therefore, we become estranged from Yah and prone to sin, whether in the soul is weak and tends toward ungodliness. We have a proclivity toward sin. We have an attraction. We are like flames to a, a moth to a flame when it comes to sin because our minds are carnal. That's why we struggle. My, 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 my. Help me, Holy Ghost. <coughs> Do you remember Aaron and the golden calf? After seeing all the miracles of Yah, including the parting of the Red Sea, the children of Israel, our ancestors, still stubbornly refused to change. Someone wrote, people are so emotionally attached to their demons that they rebuke healing, preferring the curses of Deuteronomy 28, that will kill them, ergo we struggle. Consider the rich young ruler for those who are feeling that I'm a height, who those who are feeling I'm walking in the will of the Lord because I'm keeping Torah according to the law. But is the law in your heart? Consider the young rich ruler that came to Yahushua and he said, good master or rabbi, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now the young man was feeling pretty good about himself because in his mind, in his mind, and in his mind, he thought, I got this. The master replied, hey, do you know Moses and the law and the Ten Commandments? He said, oh, I got you now, Savior. Yes, I do. He said, because I've kept them from my youth. The Bible says that Yeshua loved him instantly. But here's the thing. He loved him instantly because he saw something in him that needed to be challenged. He said, that's wonderful. He said, but there's one thing that thou lackest. Because he was struggling with something. He said, sell all that you have and follow me. And the word of God says that he turned because he was sad in countenance. He got depressed because as soon as he quoted, I kept all the scriptures. He was so proud of what he thought he was offering y'all. But when God challenged his struggle, when y'all looked into his soul and saw that there was one thing that he lacked, when the Lord said to me, there's something that you need to change. There's something that you need to give up. There's something that you need to yield. He walked away from him. As soon as God challenges our comfortableness, as soon as God challenges our lives, as soon as God requires us to do something out of our comfort zone, we struggle. It means that we would rather stay in the pig pen of life than change our course of action. Ha 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 ha. We want to reap the benefits of Yah without living for Yah. The benefits of Yah are an abundant life. And for the sake of time, I can't talk about, but you know, the abundant life is not talking about material things. Woo. Help me hold this. So we don't want to change our course of action. It means that we fight Yah. We contest Yah. We combat Yah. We tussle with Yah. We battle with Yah. We war with Yah. We strife with Yah. We wrestle with Yah. We act out with Yah. We campaign against Yah. And then we exert ourselves to keep him out of our lives. Yeah. But I submit to you that the struggle is over. So I submit to you, congregation, then why are we struggling? Mm -hmm. Let me show this to you. It's in our DNA. Yeah. The people of God historically have been recalcitrant toward him. We have been uncooperative in our attitudes toward his authority, his discipline, and we stubbornly refuse to change our course of action despite his attempts to help us not be lost. Mm. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's plan for salvation has one goal, 
to connect us with the Father, to redeem us and have a close relationship with him. Hallelujah. The Lord of heaven and earth wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. He wants to comfort us. He wants to be with us through every life experience. Amen. John chapter 4 and 9 says, In this the love of Yah or the love of God was manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Going somewhere with this. So that struggle is over while we're struggling. In his, in his plan makes it possible for us to be perfected through the atonement, receive fullness of joy, and live forevermore in the presence of Yah. The plan of Yah was so perfect. In other words, it was complete. So that what the law could not do and the sacrifice of animals could not do, his son, Yeshua, Yahushua the Christ did. Romans chapter 5 and 10 says, For it while we were enemies, mm, good God from a burning world, <laughs> while we were enemies, yeah. that means that God didn't know us. We didn't get along with us. And when you have an enemy, you want to wipe it out. You want to take it out. You want to do something about it. We were God's hated enemies. He said we were reconciled to Yah or to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. The apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 19, he said, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, such as silver and gold, from your vain conversations. Another by, uh, uh, verse in the Amplified said, Do you recognize that you were redeemed and ransomed from your useless, fruitless way of living? Inherited by the traditions of Preach. your fathers. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize that the traditions of your fathers was useless? Preach. It was fruitless. It was corruptible. He said, but you were purchased. Huh? But with the precious blood of Christ. As a lamb without spot, blemish, or any such thing. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Mm, come on, Sid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 10 and 12 says, which only in meats and drinks and divers washings. The Amplified calls it your ceremonial deals with the clean and unclean meats and, and drinks and offerings and washings, good Lord. These were mere external rules and regulation for the body imposed to tie the worshiper over until the setting of things was straight. Hallelujah. Spirit said to me, your feasts and your ordinances and your Sabbaths, they were just a foreshadowing of things to come. So here is where Jeremiah 29 and 10 comes. He says, I have an expected end for you. Amen. So the whole point of your Sabbaths, the whole point of all this ceremonial stuff was to tide you over until the fruition, the revelation of Yeshua the Christ came to our expected end. In other words, when I put this process in place, there was an expected end for my people. Hallelujah. Verse 11 says, but Christ being a high priest of good things to come, but a greater and more perfect tabernacle, <coughs> not made with the hands of man. So he says, neither by the blood of goats, good Lord, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained, obtained eternal redemption for us. The struggle is over. So why are we struggling? In other words, our forefathers struggled to keep the Sabbath. They struggled to keep the feast. They struggled to keep all the ceremonial law. They struggled with it. But the Lord allowed it to be maintained because it was a foreshadowing of the ultimate sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice, which was the Lamb of God, who came for the last time. We don't need no goats. We don't need no turtles. Hey. <clears throat> so why are you struggling? Colossians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 says, who have delivered us, who have rescued us, who has brought us out of the muck, the mire, and the clay, who has saved us from a dangerous or distressing situation, from the domain or the area of territory owned or controlled by the ruling government. What was that ruling government? Verse 13 said, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son and whom we have the redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness, the release of sins. Yeah. Good God Almighty, y'all don't hear me now. You can sit here and sit and look like you don't understand what I'm saying. But I'm saying.
understand you why you struggling because Jehovah sent Jesus Christ his son yes. bring it down to the kingdom yes. somebody said 42 generations yes. and he was crucified on the cross yes. and he took all our hang ups and hung them up yes. 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 Hey. Isaiah chapter 53 I love you Lord Woo! in the complete Jewish Bible verses 1 through 5 it said to whom is the arm of Adonai revealed for be him, <laughs> for be him, before him, he grew up like a young plant. Your scripture says tender plant, like a root out of dry ground. He was not well formed or, spe we're talking about Yahushua. It says he was not well formed or especially handsome. We saw him, but his appearance did not attract us. The other, your scripture says he was rejected and despised. People despised and avoided him. A man of pains, well acquainted with illnesses and grief, like someone from whom people turn their faces. He was despised, and we did not value him. In fact, it was our diseases he bore, our pains from which he suffered. Yet we regarded him as punished, stricken, and afflicted by Yah. But he was wounded for our crimes, crushed because of our sins. And the discipline that makes us whole fell on him, and by his bruises we are healed. Every possible thing that our ancestors in the grave as well as of who are far off our sins was nailed on the tree. Hallelujah! Every sin listed in Galatians chapter 5 was nailed on the tree. Somebody screamed sexual immorality, nailed on the tree. Impurity, nailed on the tree. Sensuality, nailed on the tree. Idolatry, nailed on the tree. Sorcery, he was nailed on the tree. Enmity, nailed on the tree. Strife, nailed on the tree. Jealousy, nailed on the tree. Fits of anger, nailed on the tree. Rivalries nailed on the tree. Dissensions nailed on the tree. Divisions nailed on the tree. Envy nailed on the tree. Drunkenness nailed on the tree. Orgies nailed on the tree. Preach! Preach! The struggle is over. Yeah. Nailed on the tree. Amen. So why are we struggling? He said, I warn you as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. Hebrews, mm -hmm. Jews, mm -hmm. don't care now. Mm -hmm. Call yourself a Christian or believer. Mm -hmm. Every pastor, including mental disorder, was nailed on the tree. Yes. Yes. So why are you struggling? Glory. He died that we might have a right or access to the tree of life. Mm -hmm. So now do you understand when he says, Jeremiah said, I know the thoughts I have to bring you to an expected end. What was Yahshua's thoughts back then when he was with, 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 with God in the kingdom up there? He was like, I need to nail all of these to the cross so that I can get an expected end. What is that expected end? To reconcile us back with the yeah. Father. Hallelujah. Glory. Do you know what I like about this? There's a song that said they hung him high. They stretched him wide. And then he died. But that's not how the story ends. Because in three days he rose again. And you know, I love that, but we stopped there. But can I share this with you? I was so excited about this. Now, when Yahushua, Jesus, Yeshua, after being brutally crucified, he was died dead, buried, and in Sheol, the grave. You know, y'all can study that. He was there for three days and three nights, and he arose. But when he resurrected himself, he did something absolutely amazing, mm -hmm. something spectacular and marvelous, mm -hmm. something that was impossible for anyone else or anything else to do. Not even Michael the archangel could do it. Neither Moses the deliverer or any prophet could do it. Somebody say, what did he do? What did he do? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, the struggle is over. So why are you struggling? Wow. He said, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. Oh, good Lord. Hallelujah. And gave gifts unto men. Lord, I share this with you. Captivity is the condition of being imprisoned or confined 
internment, incarceration, custody, detention, restraint, constraint, committal, arrest, somebody say bondage, slavery, servitude, and enslavement. The Bible says that when he did all of this, he led this captivity, this thing that had us in bondage, this thing that had us enslaved, this thing that had us imprisoned, he took it and led it captive and gave gifts unto men. Can I explain it to you? I'll explain it to you. Though Adam sinned, through Adam's sin, we were imprisoned and enslaved. Here's your scripture to back it up. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 13. In the King James Version, he said, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and with that sin, by death by sin. And so, because this sin imprisoned and enslaved us, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Hallelujah. The struggle is over. Hallelujah. Why are you struggling? Oh, my Lord. Through sin, Satan gained dominion and took custody mm. Mm. of this world and its inhabitants. Mm. In other words, when Satan sinned, he gave over the deed, yeah. not only to yeah. his ability to have eternal life, but he gave over the entire world and gave Satan dominion. That means rulership. That means ownership. Great over the world yeah. and its inhabitants. Oh. And because of that, he took custody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preach. Mankind was evicted because of sin. But the struggle is over. Hallelujah. Through sin, Satan gained dominion. And so Christ referred to him as the prince of this world. So somebody saying and being smart, well, how is Satan the God of this world? Ain't God all of that? Go to 2 Corinthians, and you can read it for yourself, chapter you 4. It. You got it. So. But the phrase, the God of this world or God of this age, indicates that Satan is a major influence on the ideals, yes. Yes. opinions, goals, hopes, and views of the majority of people, including so-called believers, so-called Hebrew Israelites, so-called Hebrews, so-called Jews, and so-called Christians. I'm just covering the gamut today. There you go. There you go. His influence also encompasses the world's philosophies, education, and commerce, uncooperative attitudes toward the authority or the discipline of Yah. Everything that the enemy did when he, when we gave him the deed. He now has dominion. That means he controls the commerce. That means he controls the airways. That means he controls television. That means he tries to control Preach. social media. Why? Because when we sin, we give over to his foolishness. The thoughts, ideas, and speculations of false religions of the world are under his control and have sprung from his lies and deception through sin and death. Through sin, the death restrained and constrained us. When the right, and this is what was interesting, and I want you to clearly hear me. When I say the struggle's over, you do know that before Yahushua, Yahusha, Jesus, y'all got it, him, the Christ, Meshiach, before he died, anybody that was righteous or unrighteous, the Bible says they went to hell. That's the uh, European King James thing. But when you study, you understand it was compartmentalized. But I need you to understand something. They all still went to the they kingdom below. Yes, they, they had something defined in Luke as the bosom of Abraham and something that they have that the, the Eskenazis term Gehenna, which is the bad part. That's where, you know, where you wasn't good before Yeshua came. When you died, you, you ended up there. But here's the thing. They were both there because they were captive. They were restrained and they were constrained. So death had influence or even over the righteous. You need to understand that the struggle is over and what I'm talking about. So you can read that on your own thing. You can talk about Abraham and Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham, but I want to get to so you understand when he said he had captivity captive, here's what he did. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55, go there with me. He said, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, mm, yam teruah, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be rise incorruptible, and we 
shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, it is written, mm, good God, help me, death mm, is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? You need to understand before the death of Ashua, death had control, it restrained, and it constrained hey. us. We were stuck in a kingdom where we did not belong. We were stuck in shield, and we could not get out. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, glory. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. The struggle is over. But thanks be to God, the struggle is over. But be thanks to God, which gives us the victory <laughs> through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he says, for all y'all that's struggling, can't get it together, the Lord understands. I'm living by grace, good God, Lord. Sorry, that's for the Christians. <laughs> Therefore, my beloved brethren and sistren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So, as we begin to wrap this up, he vanquished our foes and took them can I tell y'all something? Can I just stop for one quick second? Yahushua was a bad member Yes, yes. How you gonna go down there and take captivity and make it captive? <laughs> and then vanquish it and bring it up under your party. That's when he said, when I rose, I had all power Hallelujah. in my hand. What was that power? It was their power and the ability for the ones who, when they die in Christ, to become the resurrected ones. Because before Yahushua died, we did not have that power, and we did not have that ability. <laughs> so my Lord and Savior, he went to captivity and said, come here, boy. Give me back the ability of death to decide what goes on. Give me back yes. the grave who yes. is holding Abraham, yes. Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. Give me back that is holding the 12 patriarchs. Satan, give me back the keys of hell yes. and death. He took captivity captive and vanquished our foes. Yes. Yes. The Meshiach Christ took captive sin, mm -hmm. Satan, yes, death in the grave. And then he gave gifts yes. unto men. And with these gifts, he gave us the ability to become perfected. Mm -hmm. That means to be equipped. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew word is kadoshim. Mm -hmm. It means holy ones. The unity of the saints. When we were not a people, he made us a people. Mm -hmm. He gave us Torah. He gave us an identity. He set us apart. He gave us a purpose. He gave his name. He made us equal heirs with him in a life of eternity. Then, my brothers and sisters, can we see that the plan of Yah was perfect, meaning it was complete? The struggle is over, so why are you struggling? Yah left nothing to chance. The execution of his plan of salvation was flawless. He spared no expense for the redemption of his people, including his only begotten son. So I ask a question. <laughs> so Yah asked us this question. He said, what I have done for these people, you say, won't he do it? But what did he get in return? Mm -hmm. In Isaiah chapter 5, he asked the prophet, he said, now you dwellers in Jerusalem, now you dwellers in the United States, now you dwellers in Newark, now you dwellers in Bethel. He's asking a question of the Whoa. people of Judah. He said, judge between me and my vineyard. My, my, my. What more could I have done? When you say you are struggling with alternative lifestyles, when you say you're struggling with drunkenism, when you say you're struggling with being envious, when you're saying you're being struggling with, with jealousy, I want to ask you a question. If Yah did all of this and his plan was perfect and he executed it perfectly and he made sure that all bases was covered, he said now that I've done all of this Bethel, 
judge between me and you because you are my vineyard. He said, what more could I have done for my vineyard that I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? He said, I looked for a man and I couldn't find anybody to stand in the gap. Remember that. For all of this, y'all got unproductive fruit. There are strong similarities between our ancestors in Isaiah and us today. Clearly hear me. Yahushua, Yeshua, Jesus did not come to reform, which means to make changes our flesh, but to crucify it. Woo! If you are struggling, you need to identify the root cause of your struggle and kill it. Romans chapter 6, Hallelujah. verse 6 and 7 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Stop giving your excuses for the pitiful things that we do. How we are attracted to this. How we want to do this. How we hold on to things. We get mad and we don't let things go. We let strife build up. We are rebellious toward y'all. We are rebellious toward y'all each other. But he says, I did not come to reform your flesh. I came to crucify it. I came to kill it dead. I came to bury it. Why? Because everything I went through was for everything that you could possibly go through. There's nothing that you can say to Yah that he didn't feel, that he didn't experience. But he said, I was tempted in all these points, yet without sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So why are so many people who call themselves Hebrews and Christians and believers and Jews and all that other stuff, struggling with sin. I'm going to tell you why. Second Timothy, chapter 3. I'm going to read it out of the something called the Tree of Life version. But understand this. In the last days, perilous or hard times will come. Here's why. He said, judge between me and my people. For people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, Arrogant, 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 blasphemers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, another version said unthankful, unholy, hard-hearted, unforgiving. I've never seen so many believers arguing on social media about nonsense, unforgiving, calling people names, backbiting. Talking about the men and women of God behind their backs. Now y'all got both. Y'all talking about us in front of our face. You have no control. Without self-control, you are brutal. Hating what is good. People of God are treacherous. They are reckless. They are conceited. They are lovers of pleasure rather than loves of God. Holding to an outward form of godliness but denying its power. He said avoid these people. My Lord. So I submit to you, our struggle has nothing to do with the law of Yah. It was made perfect, but it was given to a frail and imperfect people. Our struggle has nothing to do with the plan of salvation, but it is our desire to reserve some of our dominion over our lives without input from the Creator. Our struggle is not the law, but our unwillingness of man to keep it. Not because his laws are grievous, we simply do not want to do what Yah has commanded us to do. So while we may attend our churches, our assemblies, our camps, our congregations, many of the believers quote this scripture, oh, death, where's that thing, where's the victory? And we shout over this as if we have produced our own redemption and therefore have no accountability to anyone, including God. So we struggle. We have failed to allow the Holy Spirit to completely rid of our old leaven in our hearts, in our lifestyles, in our minds, in our life choices, and in the service to Yah. Paul admonished the Corinthians, he said, Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lamp, as new lump as ye are unleavened. Can I just stop the lesson just very quickly? One of the challenges of why we struggle is because we're constantly trying to put old wine in new containers. That's the truth. And he's saying, put these things away, which means he's telling you that the reason why you're struggling is because you have the ability, you just choose not to use it. Because Paul said, I bring my body under subjection. Now I'm going to use me so that you all don't think I'm talking about you. What I began to do is I began to challenge my own nature, 
Would I feel some type of way toward leadership? Yes, sometimes I do. I check myself. Even if I feel that they're wrong, I check myself. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, for some reason, I don't know where the spirit of pride was trying to come upon me, I began to say, flesh, submit yeah. to the will of the Lord. Yeah. I began to speak to that thing. I said, Lord, help me find something because I don't know where this is coming from, but I'm not dealing with this foolishness. In other words, I have learned that when I stop fighting Yah and fighting his will and submit, even though temptations and things come, I am not like Yahushua, like Yahshua, like Jesus. I quote the scriptures and I remind my father of his promise to me. I say, so now, Lord, this temptation or the struggle is trying to come upon me, but I will not accept it. I did not order. Say, you can have that back. Get to step it. Yeah. Yeah. I do not entertain yeah. thoughts against leadership. I do not entertain thoughts against my congregants. I do not entertain all of this stuff. I could, and I probably have to time my being right. But yeah. that's not the point. That's not what y'all called me to do. So the reason why I don't struggle sometimes, because I know sometimes y'all bring stuff to me, it's not that I don't care, sort of, kind of. <laughs> well, I care somewhat, a little bit. Okay. But I've learned that these vain babblings and strifes there you go. are not what Yah intends for me to do. Because I know I have a proclivity or a propensity towards sin. So I don't put myself in a struggle situation. Many of us are in the undertoes of a life. When we get in life because we're struggling against the word of God, we're drowning. And then we get mad at God. We're going to move on. Romans 7 and 18, he said, For I know there's no good thing or in my flesh that dwells in me. The desire to be acceptable to the world is the greatest source of compromise for believers. No one wants to suffer from ridicule or face of persecution of any kind, especially for your religious beliefs. It is easier for us to gouge or, or look at people in the world and compare ourselves to them to feel better. So here we go with our statistics, and we're done. So, preachers, teachers, evangelists, prophets, pastors, congregants. While you are struggling over your sexuality, our children's organs are being stolen. Oh. Yeah. USA Today estimated there are more than 16,800 families that have been represented in lawsuits that claim that their loved one's body parts have been stolen for profit over the course of the previous year. Mm -hmm. And most of them are turning out to be people of color. So why are you struggling with trying to figure out what you are? So Hebrews, or Hebrew Israelites, or whatever you call yourself, where you are arguing over polygamy or polygamy, mm -hmm. over 64,000 women in the U.S. have gone missing. Mm -hmm. And this does not include those who have not been reported. Mm -hmm. So why y'all bang battling? Why y'all arguing? Mm -hmm. So why you are struggling and why we, over, why we argue, which is ridiculous, over Christianity versus Hebraism? Oh. Preach! There has been a rise sharp in the Christian persecution in China. It has become more yes. sophisticated yes. and multifaceted than before. With brute force, the Chinese government, as they discover underground churches, its members are beaten, Teacher. fined while their Teacher. leaders are arrested, tortured, sent to labor camps, killed, or simply disappeared. But we're struggling and we're arguing over social media. Over what? Hallelujah. While you are arguing, what is my role as a woman? A woman in India watches over her as her sister was dragged off by Hindu nationalists. This woman don't know if her sister is alive or dead. A man in North Korea was taken to prison and shaken until after being awakened because he was beaten unconscious. And when he woke up, they began to beat him again while we're struggling while we're holding alts against people, mm -hmm. while we don't want to let go, while we're being rebellious, mm -hmm. while we're arguing about your doctor is wrong, while we're arguing about baptism. People are dying! Oh, yeah. Saints of the Most High. <laughs> this is a true story. A group of children were laughing and talking as they were coming down from church. Mm -hmm. After the sanctuary, they were eating together, and instantly, many of them were killed by a bomb blast. Mm -hmm. While we, saints of the Most High, mm -hmm. are struggling while we are ignoring the word of God, while we're living our best life. These people don't live in the same regions or even in the same continent, 
but they share an important characteristic that all Christians, Hebrews, Hebrew Israelites, and Jews, we are going to now begin to suffer because of our faith. The Lord said to me, because of the foolishness that we have been doing, persecution, and, and senior apostle has been teaching us, it's on our way, but baby, it's at our doorstep. Yes, but is. because we are struggling, the Ruach is not moving us so we can't see. From Sudan to Russia, from Nigeria to Korea, from Colombia to India, followers of the way are targeted because of their faith. They are attacked. They are discriminated against against work and school. They risk sexual violence, torture, arrest, and much more. Just in the last year, clearly hear me, over 245 million Christians, believers, living in places where they experience high levels of persecution. 4,305 Christians were killed for their faith. 1,000. 847 churches and other Christian buildings were attacked. Mm. 3,150 believers, notice they didn't say Christians, were detained without trial, mm. arrested, sentenced, or imprisoned. Mm. These numbers are heartbreaking, and yet they do not tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. James said, when you go through this, consider it all joy. While the people of the Most High are struggling in our sin, people are dying and going to hell. Why? Because the struggle is over. So why are you struggling? And the last things I say to you is because we have failed to allow the Holy Spirit to approach us from this 11 bread. Just want to get to this last part. The apostle says that living for God sometimes might be difficult, but we must understand that he was hung up for our hangups mm. and that yes, the struggle is over. So I submit to you all, why are you struggling? Let the people of God stand.